And, and then somewhere through this journey, don't you? Because I like this bit of the journey. You stumble from there or or maybe you deliberately planned. I'd be really interested through to becoming part of that. Treatment or or, or, or system first. And if I've got your story right, but you you tell me in more detail, <laughs> then there's a dissatisfaction with that story, which is, I think, is really something you have in common with David. He was a neuroscientist who became dissatisfied with that part of the world. And and somehow you then go, oh, I don't want I don't want this treatment world. I want the recovery world. So so yeah. tell me how that journey gets from, uh, you know, because you start yeah. in one place and, and, and really suddenly wake up and go, actually, this system's not doing any good. I need to I need to find yeah. an alternative one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think there's almost there's an element of it. Be careful what you wish for. I mean, basically, after I got out of a uh, offending addiction, I, I worked as a chef for ten years, and yeah, yeah. And, and I think kind of. I mean, this is one of the things that I always sort of say. And it makes me sound really egotistical and conceited, and I probably I am, but. Um, uh, anything that I do, I do well, and anything I do, I put everything into. So I kind of started off with no no chef experience, or anything like that, and ended up running big kitchens in big hotels, head chef, blah blah blah. Which is, of course, the journey that you and I have in common before That's, anything yeah, else. Yes. Yeah, and, and, pro- and the, the, also the next bit of it is, w- which we both did really really well at it, and then just absolutely hated it, and just thought if I end up doing this for another fifty years, I'm going to well, exactly. I'll end, up, I'll end up sticking my head in the oven after the bath. So. But I think there's also an element of it as you well. Get, you get that moment, don't you, when you're in the kitchen and go, God, I don't want to be doing this when I'm 50. Well, that's it. Oh, you look across the kitchen and you see the older chef with the bad knees and the, and you look at him and you think, fucking, you know, with the drink problem and the string of failed marriages behind him and addiction issues, yeah. Um, but, again, I think, like I say, it sounds a bit, a bit cliche, but drugs and offending are all a no really so like I say I, I got when I got into to chefing and catering and all that sort of stuff but I just had no I love food and I still do now cooking for me but I had no love for doing what I was doing outwards it was just it was a money maker I was good at it blah 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 but and I just kind of thought to myself that like I say that it must have been other lads like me who came from my my type of upbringing my social grouping with the, with my social choices my social options who wanted to get out but didn't know how. And I think that's the thing for me that kind of, there's a lot of the stuff that, that I've done with, with NWRC in particular and with Agro. That so we must keep about, reminding people that NWRC stands for North Wales Recovery Community. Yeah, for North Wales Recovery yeah. Community that, that I'm immensely proud of and that I know has only been brought about directly by my, by my, my own work, my own efforts and, I, and all that sort of stuff. But my recovery, I just kind of felt, it was like a door that I fell through. I, I, do you know what I mean? So at that point, so I was lucky to get my out at that point then. But then I then had to spend the next 10 years kind of developing sober living skills, really. And this was before I even knew that this is what they were. But it was the, these things that I had to learn about how to be able to manage my anger and how that if somebody pissed me off, I couldn't just you know, kick the heads in or the, you know, that it was the, all these things that I had to do to try and particularly make, and that was, I think my, my, my initial primary focus was wanting to work with offenders and I wouldn't even call them recovering offenders because I don't, for me, recovery, that term didn't really exist at that point. Yeah. yeah. Particularly for sort of, so I, I've, and, and again, I think again, it's my transferable skills, but I, so I, I kind of, this, this was the goal that I'd wanted. So I had a friend who worked in mental health as a support worker. So I just said to him, listen, I'm going to go with a stereotypical plan. I'm going to go to university. I'm going to do a sociology and criminology degree. And then I'm going to get myself a job in criminal justice because nobody's ever done that before now. Yeah. Uh, and then basically, so, but I want six months experience because I have no, no education to speak of or anything like that, really. So, um, so I, I went worked six months in mental health on to one support. I just loved it, absolutely fell in love with it. So I ended up staying there for sort of like four years. And then I was going to go down the old mental health route and everything with it then. I wish I had done sometimes, really. Life would have been so much simpler. But then, like I said, I just kind of, it's, again, it sounds a bit of a cliche, but I felt like I had a calling for the criminal justice stuff at that point. So I'd seen a job came up working on, on the DIT programme, which was the, the drugs intervention programme, which uh, the concept of it was to try and get people out of crime and into treatment in a nutshell and i'd seen that and i just thought fuck it i'll, I'll go for it i'll have a bash um and like i say like i say a lot of addicts were, were, were good at blagging 
you know, and, and like I say, so what I, I lacked for in experience and whatever that I could get across, and like I say, and plus, the, I always remember he was an interview panel, and he was an old day, and I think she took a bit of a shine to me. She was like early 50s, so I just, and I kind of, she t- sort of tipped me the wink at the start of the interview, so I just flirted with her outrageously all the way through it. Managed to, and I, I just, again, I think I'm really lucky, Wolf, because they were recruiting full teams all the way across, so they were sort of looking for like 15 or 20 sort of, workers at a time and yeah I just, well I remember being on the other side of someone dish because uh, I was part of the person that dished out the contract wasn't I so yeah, like yeah, you know exactly. but, um, yeah I, don't, I, I just think they set the bar that low that I just kind of managed to sneak under <laughs> um, so yes and then I've got this great dream job working in criminal justice uh, I met Pete Moore else who just had a had a, a massively profound impact upon me um, even though we don't sort now it's a different story Um but um, and he was a good early leader in. in oh stuff. yeah, ma- massively yeah. so. Uh, yeah, I mean. For and we me, might talk about that somewhere about carriers and leaders, but go yeah, on. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, for he was huge in, because, like I say, I think I was just a sponge at that point when I got into yeah. it, and and like I say, um, and then Pete kind of switched me on to, and that's the first first person that kind of taught recovery. And then he, he brought me along to one of the recovery academy events, and like I say, that just like. <sighs> That just like really blew my mind. 